his chest away and my marriage also started going down the road. So I, I went into a valley. Now during that valley, let me tell you one thing, it's very important what you do when you're in the valley. Some people decide that they want to drink, some people decide that they want to take drugs, some people decide that they want to hang around the wrong people, but what I did was to clutch and hang on to the Lord, okay? And during that valley, it was the hardest time of my life. And let me tell you, when you're in that point where you're quiet, you're alone, normally now like me, when I'm going through a tough time, I like being alone. So that's when the Lord spoke and told me that I needed to start Real Talk. I started Real Talk on a small, small scale. I started just sending out audios because it was like, Jack, you know what? You've gone through so much in your life and people need to know what's going on. Some people look at you and think everything is fine. These are things that are not spoken about. Very many people are very shy to talk about themselves or to talk about the struggles that they've gone through because maybe they're scared of criticism or whatever. But at the end of the day, as a born-again Christian, if the Lord has said that your calling is to care, that is my calling. My calling is to care. How am I going to care for somebody if I don't tell them what I have gone through so that I can be able to help them? So during that time, the Lord spoke to me. I started sending out audios on WhatsApp, and then it moved to, I wrote a book called Real Talk on the issues that I've gone through. And then I wrote, I went into YouTube. After going onto YouTube, the Lord advanced and brought me onto REST TV. But let me tell you people one thing, is that the end does not happen because you're going through tough times. Actually, for me, I see it as, as an advantage because I can talk about it. I don't fear to talk about my life, by the way. <laughs> and one thing that I need to tell you people is that if you've gone wrong in life, like, for example, if your marriage has broken down, that doesn't mean that you cannot marry. But then for me, I'm getting married the third time. People say it's not an African thing. African? What is that? So at the end of the day, um, I'm going to ensure that if I get that loved person who actually respects me and understands my calling, always remember that we have to be equally yoked with a believer because they will derail you from what you're doing if you do not decide to go out with a believer. If I decided that, oh my God, my job, I lost my job, I'm just going to sit home and do nothing, who's going to pay the bills for you? You have to ensure that you get up and start looking for something to do. The Lord was good to me. It took about a year without a job, but I'm telling you, during that year, I did not change my lifestyle because I had my sister and my cousin who came up and decided to take care of me during that time. And then during COVID, I mean, before COVID, I got a job. And then during COVID, I got another job. So life can be tough. But at the end of the day, you will need to understand that, yes, life may be tough, but you are the one who decides what your next step is. You're the one who decides whether I'm going to clutch into Jesus. Jesus is the answer to everything. There's nothing that can happen in your life without Jesus. He's the center of everything. So we have to ensure that we just stick onto him. We go through life. Everybody goes through life. Someone can look at me and be like, Jackie is fine. Jackie doesn't go through a lot. Hmm. It has been tough. At my age, uh, people normally don't like saying their ages, but me, I don't mind talking about my age. This May, I'm turning 48. I just have two years to be 50. So at the end of the day, I look at life and say, if the Lord has blessed me up to today, so why can't I bless others? Okay? So basically, that's how Real Talk started. And I thank God for REST TV, that they gave me the opportunity to have this show because I would definitely be able to reach out to, to more people. And this is a live show, so people have to call in and ask me questions, ask me anything that they would like to know. And basically, um, I don't know whether it's time for Ivan. Is it time for Collins? So um, what else can I talk about? We'll talk. I'm going to talk about different issues. I'm going to talk about different topics. 
I'm going to talk about uh, things that actually happen in the real life, real life scenarios. What happens in the office space? What happens in the business space? Where do pe why do people do the things that they do? Why do we have a lot of pretense? Why do we have a lot of jealousy? Why are people envious? You understand? I'm going to talk about LGBTQ, which is a very, 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 very sensitive subject. I'm going to talk about masturbation that people do that, yes, they may think is right and okay. Hello, I'm single. Jackie, how am I going to handle? Jesus Christ. I am going to talk about those things. So, I'm going to talk about those topics that people feel like, ah, it's a bit sensitive to talk about on TV, but now if people know me, oh no, Jackie, I talk about the sensitive stuff. And um, I just want us to be as free as possible. Whatever question you want to ask me, whatever, if I don't know the answer, I will tell you that, please give me your number, I will get back to you. Because I'm not perfect, I mean, I don't know everything. So, that is basically what, um, we are looking at, and um, it's, it's, it's going to be, that's why I call it real talk, because it's going to be like real, real issues, real, real issues. I mean, talk about issues of witchcraft. Why do people do witchcraft? I mean, everything that happens that sometimes is very, very sensitive to talk about. Some people have not had fathers in their lives. What do I do, Jackie? I feel neglected. I was molested sexually when I was a child. I did not grow up with a father when I was growing up. I just grew up with my mom. So I feel like I don't know how to act as a dad. I don't have that love to act as a dad. So basically, everything that happens in the real life is what we're going to basically discuss on Real Talk. It's going to happen every Monday and Tuesday, 10.30 to 11. So be tuned in. Please be ready to ask as many questions as possible, dependent on the time Ivan gives me. And um, yeah, so I don't know where we are for now. Are we there yet? Or should I talk about something else? So, so the call-ins are not yet ready. So um, I want to just talk about a little bit about um, the valley. I just kind of like talked a little bit about the valley that I went through. You know, when you're at the workplace and you're holding a high position, there are so many people around you, okay? When there are so many people around you, um, you think that you have friends. When you lose your job, all these people kind of tend to disappear. I remember my former HR told me that, Jackie, be very careful. You're very caring. You take all your time to take care of people. But just remember, the people around you, because of the post, that you hold, but because of who you are. And I just laughed it off. But the truth actually hit me when I lost my job at UTL and everybody just disappeared. Remember that I was also going through my marriage issues. So I felt like my world was just like no one was there to take care of me. I actually felt like I almost went into a state of depression because you feel like, where is God? What is happening? But you see, even if you're asking where is God, he doesn't blame you for doing that. Because once in a while, you have to ask him because you're going through a tough time and you're a human being. So during that time, you've lost your job. Who, who do you actually need next to you? That's your spouse. But your spouse is not there because you've lost your job. He feels that you're not very important anymore. So he decides to take off. And uh, you feel like, okay. So what am I supposed to do now? So what did I do? I decided to go to a place called Shiloh. There's a place called Shiloh Altar. The canon, basically she allows anybody from any sect of Christian, as long as you're a Christian, to go there and pray and be delivered. And I went and I prayed. I cried. I did everything you can imagine. And the Lord delivered me. The Lord helped me to do things that are very important in the Bible. He helped me to forgive because number one, you have to forgive. Number one, I was very bitter with my company. I had been, worked there for 10 years. I was like, how do they wake up and just tell senior managers to go home? I mean, what is that? I had to forgive my husband. I had to forgive his relatives. 
And I had to go before God and ask the Lord to forgive me for the bitterness that I now had within me. Because it is natural to go through a lot of bitterness and anger and you're like, what is going on with me? You understand? So the Lord helped me with that. He helped me really a lot. And that is why I said it depends on how you handle your valley. In the mountains, by the way, let me tell you, me, Aki, I don't even allow people to talk about their lives when they're in the mountain. <laughs> when you're in the mountain, everything is okay. Because when you're in the valley, that the Lord actually tests you. So you need to understand that God is the center of it all. He is the one who will do everything for you. I have seen God's hand in my life. Let me tell you, from when I was a child to today, that nobody can actually ever, ever convince me to leave the Lord and go, for who? How? There is nothing. There is no man. There is no friend. There is nobody who can remove me from loving Jesus. Once I turned my life and I became a born-again Christian, I said, this is it. This is it for me, you know? People may see you. You know, for me, I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit funky. You know, I have my white hair. I have what? And then people will judge you and be like, is this one really a born-again Christian? It is not really about what you look like. Let me tell you. The Lord in the Bible is very clear. He focuses on the heart. So you may be all covered up and you may have clothes that are up to here and you may always be wearing long dresses but your heart is the worst ever. You may be full of jealousy, you may be full of anger, you may be full of bitterness, you may be full of all these things. It's the heart that the Lord looks at. So if Jackie feels like she wants to look nice and she wants to look beautiful, I am doing this because I want to look beautiful for the Lord. Why does the Lord want people who look bad? No, no, no. You should see my producer, Ivan. Ivan is just donkey. He is always looking nice. What? <laughs> he poses. The first time he even passed me. But it is okay. Then after that, he realized that he had to come and, you know, talk to me. But life is, life is like that. But um, my kids, my kids um, were very, were very um, cautious about, about this show because me, I have big kids. My first one is 22. Then I have a 19-year-old, and I have 15, and then I have a very big baby that I adopted that is one year and six months. So I have kids, so I understand also that side. I will also talk about that side. How do you handle a child who is rebellious? Because me, I have gone through <laughs> all those stages. So I know exactly what it means to be a mother, sometimes a single mother, because we... Me and my ex, we do like joint custody, but how is it, how do you handle it when this 19 year old looks at you in the face and says, no, I'm not going to do this? As a Christian, how do you handle it? So these are some things that we're going to discuss and things that we're going to ensure that everybody understands. And this is a different type of show, guys. This is a different type of show. So let us be ready to be real. Let us stop hiding our heads in the sand, that very many Christians do. We go through issues and we don't want people to know. We go to church, we raise our hands, and we feel like everything is okay. But at the end of the day, we are going through a lot of issues. So we need to be real with ourselves. We need to be real because once you're real, your heart gets clear. One thing I always tell people that for me, it is very, very hard to annoy me by the way. And another thing that the Lord helped me with is that I forget very quickly. So once you've done something bad to me, tomorrow I'll meet you on the streets and I'll be like, hey, what's up? And this person will be like, but we had a fight yesterday. Me, I don't remember those things. So try your level best to clean your heart. Crucify yourself every morning. What I mean by cruci crucify yourself every morning, clean your heart from all, all bitterness, all anger. Someone could have annoyed you. Some people just wake up in the morning to annoy others, by the way. You need to know that. Some, especially women, I chai. We wake up in the morning and we're like, that one, I am going to annoy. But wake up in the morning and say, I am blessed. You know what I do? When I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror and I say, I am blessed. I am favored. I am beautiful. I am loved by God. Nothing is going to disturb me today. Nothing. Even if it comes, 
will pass like this and it will pass like that. And that will be it. And before you know it, the person who actually tried to stress you is the one who gets stressed because normalized. I like that one of back to sender. So back to you. So Ivan, where are we? You know, I like disturbing you. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm waiting for the call-ins now. Anybody who would like to call in and ask any question, the number is on the screen. Um, please call in and ask whatever question you'd love to ask. I am here for you and waiting for any call. Um, so, any any questions to do with anything, whether it is parenting, whether it is um, anger, whether it is um, masturbation, I have challenges, whether it is, uh, there's fornication, but I need to talk about fornication. Aki, you know, the thing is that w our, the world, because of watching too much TV and everything, every movie that I watch today has a lesbian, couple or has a gay couple or has um, people sleep, sleeping together when they're not married and it has become it has become very normal so those are things that as a Christian is it right for us to do is it right for us to people think it's normal I remember the time when I on my YouTube channel I talked about the lesbians and the gays and oh I got a I, I really got a bash a bashing tries trust me I got a bashing because some people were call, were writing to me or calling me and asking me but Jackie I was born like this so what am I supposed to do am I supposed to change who I am but the beauty with knowing the word of God is that you quote verses for the person and you tell them you know what just go read and get back to me okay most of the time, they will read these verses and they will actually no, not get back to you. They will not. They will, because it is clear in the word and the word is a living thing. You understand? So they will look at it and they will read it and they will see that the Lord clearly said homosexuality is not acceptable. And they will not get back to you. So fornication is clear in the Bible. We, we all do it. You understand? By, the way, by me sitting here, and talking to you does not mean that I'm perfect. <laughs> so when I say that fornication is something that, that is bad, I could have done it as well. So I'm part of you guys, man. I'm, I'm, I go through the things that you go through. So for me, it's something that I will just love to, for us to share and understand that Jack is not sitting here because she's a perfect person. She doesn't do these things. <laughs> I do them. But I'm sitting here because I want us to have a real discussion. Because I have gone through it. I am still going through it. Yeah, it hasn't stopped. But it's something that, hey, that happens. So, yeah. So Ivan is telling me to continue. And um, anybody calling in? Um, so at the end of the day, I think being the first show, um, we we it, people are not yet used to it and stuff like that, but people will, people will catch up. And I'm going to advertise this show like like nothing, so people will know what to do. People will note that they're supposed to call in, but um, the fact that there are no people that, that there's nobody calling in, um, I guess I will just say I love you all and God bless you guys and have a lovely Monday, Ivan. I'm out. You're watching Rest TV, Wumula.
watching Res TV Umula And if you have any question you can call I talk now Um, real talk. Um, for those who are listening earlier, basically this is a new show that started today and I'm going to be talking about the real issues. But I was basically talking about the valley just before we went on a break. And um, the valley is the time when the Lord actually tests our faith in Him. And the valley is the time when we know as Christians how close we are to Christ. Now, during that time, because I was still talking about Shiloh, so I went to Shiloh altar, and I really prayed. And I'm telling you people, is these morning dues and lunch hours and the evening services that the pastor has, Pastor Isaac Chiwewesi or Pastor Charles Casivante or all these other pastors have, let me tell you, they keep you glued onto Christ because you're constantly, your mind is constantly onto Christ. We cannot give it any excuses because all these things are on phone. We are constantly with our phones, watching other things. We can once in a while just tune in and watch. Just just type in Kansanga Miracle Center and then on YouTube and you'll be able to watch all these morning dues and the lunch hours and things like that. And it helps. It helps with you understanding the word, number one. Number two, understanding how you can how you can handle the issues that you're going through and knowing that you can stick onto the Lord because at the end of the day there's nobody else that you can stick onto. Let me tell you. In Numbers it says that God is not a man who changes. He's not a man who changes his mind. He's not a man who lies. He's not a man something like that. He's not like man who lies and things like that. Babatim. But basically what it's trying to say is that a man is going to end up lying to you. Human beings are human beings. They're going to end up lying to you. Okay? But God is constant. He's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He's the same forever. He's never ever going to change. So at the end of the day, who else are you going to stick on to? I ask people. Who else are you going to stick on to but God? Because at the end of the day, He is the only person that you can rely on. I'm telling you. He's the only person that personally I have relied on when people have betrayed me, people have done things that I cannot believe. And you know the funny thing is that the people who actually betray you and do all these things are your closest people. You're in a circle, you know? So it becomes hard, it becomes tough to actually understand and evaluate what has just happened. Is this the person who just did this to me? But what do you do? You don't say, ah, let me get a bottle of beer or whatever. No, no, no. I just have to make sure that I stick on to God, go to the Bible, go to the Word. What, what does he talk about betrayal? Jesus was betrayed by, by his own people. He was crucified by his own people. So who am I as Jackie not to be betrayed? <laughs> who am I as Jackie? If Christ went through all that, who am I as Jackie not to go through that? But again, it is about reading the word of God and understanding that he can never forsake you. He can never leave you because, because he's God and he's amazing. You know, he's, he's my lover, he's my way maker, he's my, he's my problem solver. He's basically my everything. So who else are we going to stick on but God? And once we understand that, then our lives will be so much easier. But one thing I need to let you know is that once you give your life to Christ, don't think that everything is going to change and become okay. 
the demons that are going to attack you to distract you are going to be very many. So you have to make sure that you're strong and you're grounded. All right, so, so we, I can hear somebody's calling in. Hello. 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 Hi. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? You're not very clear. Um, I'm Jackie. I'm Jackie Musime Kiyoguru. Um, this is Real Talk. And can you give me your name? Because you're not very clear. Maybe you turn off your, your, the, either your TV a bit, the volume, so that I can hear you clearly. Can I have your name? Sorry, um, the network was not very good and uh, we didn't manage to get that person. I hope you can call in again. But basically, um, at the end of the day, it's about God. Okay? It's about God and it is something that we need to constantly remember. When you wake up in the morning, make sure that you pray. To ask the Lord to guide your day. Because you have no idea what people are up to. Okay? Um, during the course of the day, you know in the Bible it says, Pray unceasingly, constantly. You know, you can just be walking and you're praying. You can just be walking and you say, Lord, please take over. Make sure that I don't get an accident. Some of us will just jump on borders. Oh, Lord, help me on a border. And things like that. You just can't do what you can do, but constantly in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we need to constantly do and make sure that we, we are always in the presence of God. I just love the way the pastors give time to the people. It's not easy. Can you imagine somebody being awake at 6 o'clock, somebody being there at 1 o'clock, somebody being there in the evening, on a daily basis? So um, I want to thank the pastors for everything that they've done. And God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Watching REST TV, Woomula.